Okay, it is getting a little bit busy in the parking lot that I'm sitting in right now. Hopefully none of the things going on around us are too distracting, but uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Josh and today I have what I hope will be a pretty fun and interesting video for you all. If nothing else, the scenery should be worth a watch. As you can probably tell by looking out the window, we have escaped from the frigid and frightful winters of Texas and decamped to the sunny shores of beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. And here on the island, we have had a chance to drive what I think may just be the best cheap car in America, the Honda Civic LX. Now, this is a car and, and a whole automaker that I've wanted to do a video on for quite some time. So it's I'm really glad that I'm finally getting to show you a Honda car and take you for a drive in this amazing little Honda car. And this car is also special because it belongs to none other than my mother. Don't smash my car. This is Ina's brand new car. She's only had it for a couple months. It's only got a thousand miles on the odometer and she is absolutely in love with it and I can entirely see why. And it's funny because, you know, I wasn't even intending to film a video while we were here in the islands, but I have fallen so head over heels in love with this car myself that I just had to steal it away from her for a day to do a video with you all and take it out for a drive because so many of you out there have been asking me to get behind the wheel of a Honda and do a video about one of their new products. And that's what we're gonna do today. And I honestly think that this is probably the best thing I could have chosen from Honda to do a video on because, you know, while driving a Lexus is really nice and having a luxury car is such a fun experience in many ways, there's something about a good, cheap economy car that you just can't beat, especially when it's done as well as this Civic is. Now, to be clear, this is not the cheapest car in America by the numbers. That honor still goes to the Nissan Versa, compared to which this base model Civic is an absolutely extravagant $23,950. But if I were looking for the best new car in the low $20,000 range, which is about what you're going to spend to buy a new car in America today, this is the one I would buy hands down without even looking at anything else. And I, as you guys know, if you've been with me here on the channel for any period of time, I am a Toyota loyalist, but I would skip right over the Corolla and buy this Honda Civic because it is truly that good. Now, before we get into the details of this particular car, I want to tell you a little bit about this Civic's backstory because I think it's kind of interesting. And as we'll see, in a minute, I think this Civic has actually hugely benefited from some of the questionable decisions Honda made leading up to the launch of this car. So back in 2022, when this new generation of Civic launched, Honda made the very questionable decision to not launch the Civic with a true base model trim, which the Civic has always had over the years. There was always like a DX or an LX, and that trim level in this class of car is really, really important because in this class of car, you have people who are going out there and shopping solely on the price of the vehicle. And when this generation of Civic came out, the base model trim of the car was the sport trim and as a result of that the starting price of a Civic when this generation came out back in 2022 was closer to $26,000 than the average for the class of around $23,000 and that doesn't sound like that much it's only $3,000 different but there's this real psychological benchmark at $25,000 that some people will just draw the line at. I need to buy a car that is under $25,000. And the Sport being at $26,000 thereabouts also meant that in some places that Sport model, that base at the time base model Civic could very easily become a $30,000 car. And that's another number that a lot of people don't want to hit when it comes to the purchase price of a new car, especially for something in this class. And so I'm going to guess that a bunch of people went to buy a Corolla or an Elantra or a Forte or any of this car's competitors, because when this car, when the 2023 model of the Civic came out, Lo and behold, there was a Civic LX base model trim priced right at that $23,500 mark or so. And as counterintuitive as it sounds, I actually think that this Civic LX has hugely benefited from the fact that Honda never intended to launch a true base model trim of this Civic. And now let's dive into the interior to talk about how it has benefited from that. Okay, so first off, the thing that immediately struck me about this car is the fact that nothing in here feels like what you normally get in a stripped out base model car in this class. So think like a base Corolla, for example. This interior 
is essentially the same in terms of materials and design as what you find in every other Civic model out there and also many CRV and Accord models. And I'm guessing that that's because it would have been more expensive to design and engineer all new cheaper parts than to just reuse the nicer parts from other cars in this base model Civic. Now for my longtime subscribers, you may remember that about a year ago, I had a 2023 CRV Sport Touring on order from Honda and I'm struck by and just amazed by how much of that CRV's interior is shared with this base model Civic because that CRV Sport Touring was a $40,000 car and yet we still have a lot of the same materials, the same design, the same switch gear in this base model car. For example, the metallic knobs for the HVAC control, which are very convincing and may actually be aluminum, are not just beautiful to look at, but they are beautiful to touch and turn as well. And the same is true of the steering wheel controls, which have a perfectly dampened click to them instead of a mushy and rubbery press, which is actually what you get with a lot of Toyotas. And this honeycomb grille that runs the length of the dashboard, I think actually is metal because I don't think that you could get plastic filaments to be this robust and this strong being that thin. So I do think that that is metal. And again, even along that honeycomb grill, it is all silver. So it's not just some ugly piece of black grill. It's actually painted silver and it's really, really beautiful to look at. And the same thing is true of the gauges. This is exactly the same gauge cluster and seven inch LCD screen that we find in that top trim CRV for 2023 and 2024. And that car is $40,000 and this car is $23,000. And finally, out front, even on this base model car, we have the same headlights that are on every other trim of the Civic and CRV as well, complete with the separate and dedicated DRL strip that also becomes an amber LED turn signal. And the lighting specifically on this car is in stark contrast to what Toyota does, where they always put some ugly cheap little headlight on their lower trim models. So if you look at a new Prius or a new Camry or a new RAV4, they all have these cheap LED units where the low beam, high beam, and DRL are all combined into one element or one reflector housing, and it looks terrible out on the road. And you can always tell, as a result of that, who bought the cheap RAV4 and who bought the more expensive RAV4. And I also can't forget to mention in this Civic how good the doors feel, which is such a small thing, but it makes such a difference in this car because economy cars in this class usually have doors that feel kind of like a tin can. And my Prius, by the way, was no exception to that. But these doors have such a solid and snug door close that dare I say they have the very same kind of feeling to them that you get on many high-end German and Japanese cars and not just high-end Toyotas but Lexuses and Audis specifically is what I'm reminded of when I close these doors and I'm a huge fan as well of Honda's new door handles these are so substantial and so nice to grip and I love just getting in and out of this car so all of this to say Honda has absolutely nailed the tactile and the ergo on this car and it's those little details that make all the difference whether you're talking about a base model car or a really expensive car and I'm going to make no apologies for very frankly telling you that some of these details and the ergonomics on this Civic LX $23,000 car are better than what are on some of the new Lexus vehicles like what I had on my $53,000 Lexus NX. And you can come at me in the comments all you want, that's totally fine, but Honda is truly doing some amazing things that a lot of other manufacturers out there like Lexus and Toyota could and really should learn from. And this story of hitting way above its price point and its price class continues out on the road. So let's go ahead, get bunkled in, and we're going to take Honda's cheapest car out for a drive. Alright guys, here we go, setting out on a beautiful day in Hawaii Ne. Look at how beautiful the ocean is, how lush all the greenery here is. I just love being here so, so much. Um, and I gotta tell you, in regards to this car, 
if you were to just drop me into this car blindfolded and you were to tell me to drive it, which wouldn't be a good idea, I get that, but for argument's sake, let's imagine you did. And I were to start driving this car with no idea or understanding of what kind of car I was in or you know what kind of equipment it had or anything like that. I would really truly think that I was in a, a $35,000 to $45,000 car because that's how nicely this little Civic LX drives. And it's really incredible to me that we have a base model Civic. This is Honda's cheapest car and it drives this nicely because in this Civic, much like the CRV that I had on order, that Sport Touring, we have a really nicely refined drive. So even though we have a you know a relatively small-ish non-turbocharged four-cylinder engine, we have really good power underfoot. And even when the engine is making its power and delivering its power, you never hear it roaring and groaning and droning on the way that it does in a Toyota hybrid. And cars like this are why I constantly complain and harp on how rough Toyota's little A25A engine is because, you know, this car, this Civic LX, also has a naturally aspirated two liter four cylinder engine. It's paired to a CVT. And yet we have almost as refined driving dynamics as what we have in our Camry V6. Now, it doesn't sound nearly as good as the Camry V6 that we own, but it's the same kind of, you have the same kind of isolation in the cabin where you're not constantly hearing this little four cylinder engine roaring away. Now we're stuck behind a trolley here <laughs> on this road, so I can't go too fast and open it up to let you hear the engine. Hopefully I will be able to in a bit if we can get out from behind him. But even under full acceleration, this Civic's engine is so well done and the cabin is so nicely insulated from both the road and the engine itself and the engine compartment that you really do get a great level of refinement in here. The other thing that Honda has taken a very different approach to in terms of the driving dynamics than Toyota is the steering in this car is actually quite heavy, which some people may not like because Heavier steering can be a little bit more fatiguing on longer drives or on daily drives when you, maybe you're just sitting in traffic or coasting from stoplight to stoplight. But I personally really like it because it gives you a sense of heft and a little bit more of a sense of mass and weight to the car than you would ordinarily get in something in this class. So my Prius, for example, you could make the steering a little bit heavier in sport mode, but even in sport mode with this, the heaviest steering setting on, you weren't getting the same kind of weighting that you get in this Honda. And this is one of the areas where Honda really excels at fine tuning their cars because the other thing that heavier steering gives you especially in a really lightweight kind of cheap car like this Civic is it makes it feel a little bit more premium than it actually is because I think a lot of times a more weighted steering feel is associated with vehicle weight which you typically get in like a luxury car versus a mainstream car it makes the car feel a little bit more planted as well on the road. And it's not that it is heavier or more planted. It's just that the way that the steering feels in these cars, it makes a big difference in terms of the perception when you're driving the vehicle. Okay, so there's no one behind me at the moment and I'm gonna try to build some distance between myself and those cars up there so that I can kind of get on the accelerator a bit. That looks good enough. Let's go ahead. I'm going to punch it a little bit here. So it definitely sounds like a CVT. Definitely sounds like a four cylinder engine. But you know, in ordinary everyday driving and just keeping up with traffic, whether on city streets or on the highway, this car is perfectly happy doing that. Even without the one and a half liter turbo engine, there's enough power. And when you're on the accelerator, like I just was there, I would say under about 3000 RPM, 
you never actually hear the engine working, which is really impressive because this is not a hybrid. It's not the one and a half liter turbo, and there's nothing else, no other technology under the hood that's helping to propel this car forward. So the engine, everything, all the forward motion we're getting in this car is coming from that engine. And even still, we're not hearing it at all. The only time you hear it is again when you're really revving it to get up to highway speed from like a dead stop or something like that. And the roads here are atrocious by the way, so a lot of the noise that you might be hearing is not necessarily engine noise, it's just the fact that these roads here are terrible. But let me go ahead and build up some more distance, there's still no one behind me. So we're going to build up a little bit more distance behind that Accord, and I'll go ahead and Okay, here we go. So on that stretch, the engine was sitting at about 25 to 2800 RPM to get us up to speed. We're kind of going up an incline around a, around a curve. And I didn't hear much of it at all. So again, I really just... This car, it does all the things right that a cheap car needs to do. And it does all of them really, really well, which is what makes it really, really an impressive little car to drive. And then, of course, there's all the ergo that we talked about earlier on in the video while we were talking about the interior. So, you know, right now we're kind of cruising and coasting and carving our way through the mountains here um, alongside the coastline. And I don't have to take my eyes off the road to turn the fan speed up or to change the temperature or to you know seek seek a different track in the infotainment system and on the infotainment system we also have hard shortcut keys for things like phone radio media to connect a bluetooth device track forward and back i've got great controls here on the steering wheel my eyes are never having to leave the road to change anything about anything else that's going on in the car. And this kind of road that we're on right now, where you could very easily find yourself in the Pacific Ocean if I took my eyes off the road for too long, is exactly where I have problems with systems like what's in the new Teslas, where all you're doing is looking at the screen and new Lexuses as well. Your, your eyes have to be on that screen anytime you touch something to make sure that that is what you want to do. But in this car, everything is a knob. So I can turn the fan speed up or down. I can turn my temperature up or down. I know that the, the button on the farthest right knob is what changes the airflow in this car as well. And I can, you know, mess with that, get airflow to my feet, to my upper body, to clear the windshield if I needed to, all without having to take my eyes off the road. And that is so, so important in cars and something that I wish more automakers would recognize today because we just had a moped, a moped pass us on the other in the uh, opposite lane. If I had accidentally, you know, taken my eyes off the road and veered over the line, I could have very easily hit him. Now, on that note, talking about taking my eyes off the road and hitting other people, this car also has a lot of really great safety tech. And Honda's uh, Honda Safety Sense was not one of the best when it came out. I always thought that it felt a little bit rudimentary compared to some others out there. But what I found in driving this Civic is they've done a really nice job, as has Toyota. Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 is probably still my favorite and what I consider to be like the most mature outside of any kind of full like level three autonomous driving. But I've really found this Honda Safety Sense, the latest generation in this Civic, to be really nice. And the other thing I really like about this Civic, which is not necessarily true of all compact economy cars out there, even though we don't have any kind of onboard nav, the camera's system in this car is looking for uh, signage. So it's looking for stop signs, speed limit signs, and it puts it right there in the center of the, the gauge cluster right next to my digital speedometer so I can always see exactly what the speed limit is as long as there is a posted limit that the car has seen it will put it there for me and I really really like that about it oh and one more thing about this car before we wrap up the driving portion of the video this car has some of the best visibility out there if you have watched any of my previous videos you may have seen that I've complained a lot about the way that the A pillar is so steeply raked and actually does cut quite a bit of visibility uh, out to the corners in the new Prius. This Civic 
has teeny tiny little A pillars, and they're at a at quite a vertical angle for a sedan. So you really don't have any blind spots in this car. You've also got kind of the quarter windows that you can see here that give you great rearward visibility. In the mirror, there's a uh, kind of a, a space between the mirror and the A-pillar here at the bottom of the door as well. You can see right through. This car's got great visibility, and unlike some other sedans like the Prius out there today, the belt line in this car is low enough that I feel like I can see enough over the window still from a very natural seating position. I don't have to like crane, uh, crane my neck that way to see what's going on outside the car because I feel like I'm sitting in a bathtub. So, you know, if you're anyone like Ina <laughs> and you think that you might want something like this Civic, it's a great little car to drive and a great little car to buy and I'm so excited and happy and glad that we had a chance to take it out for a drive today. So there you have it. I have been just absolutely blown away by this little $24,000 car. And although I feel like I need to balance out all the praise with some negatives, the only two things, the only two things that I don't like about this car are the fact that we have the steel wheels and the cheapy looking fog light blank out covers. But you know what? If that's all I have to give up to buy this car at $23,000, I'd have one of these all day long, and I'll be very honest with you, if we didn't already have three cars, and if I hadn't just adopted our RAV4 Prime, I would be very tempted to go down to the Honda dealer when we got home, write them a check, and drive one of these off the lot. And I would absolutely love my life getting to drive this car. So yeah, Honda is doing some absolutely amazing things. This Civic LX is proof of that. I'm so glad I had a chance to get into a Honda, to look at the Civic, to drive this base model LX trim. I hope this was fun and enjoyable. If you all have any further questions, leave them downstairs in the comments, or you can email me here at the email on screen. I love hearing from you guys and answering all your questions and helping you through the car buying process. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope this was fun and enjoyable. I hope you enjoyed the beautiful island scenery that we've gotten to shoot here in this video as well. I will see you all real soon back up on the mainland. Have a great one and take care. Hey, don't smash my car. Oh my God. Can you just speak normally? <laughs> The English is, hey, no smash my car. Hey, no smash my car. <laughs> Not going well.